No, it's it's funny the different ways that trauma can change a person. And you don't even realize that you've changed. And you can be changed for years and not even realize that you're different than you were before. I've only, since last night, realized that I can no longer achieve anything or succeed at anything because, okay, here's what's happening. When I got really depressed last week, I started focusing all of my energy towards this game that I play uh, on my phone. There's an event going on and it ends in two days. And because I've put so much energy into it, I've been playing nonstop for a week now. And I'm in first place. I've been in first place and I have a strong lead. For the last two days, I've been having intrusive thoughts that I need to stop playing and let the person in second place take first because I don't deserve it. They say that the person in second has probably spent real money they couldn't afford trying to beat me and I'm hurting people by keeping that place because other people deserve it more. These things don't make sense. Logically, these thoughts don't make sense, which is why I'm trying to push through them. But they exist in my brain. And they're very invasive. I want to say intrusive, but it's more than that. Because it feels like it's actually another person inside my head telling me these things. And like, I know that if I do get first place in this game, I do deserve it because I have been playing this fucking game. I'm playing it right now. I... <laughs> and... It... But my brain still can't comprehend that I would deserve to win anything. Even if I try. Even if I go hard as fuck, I still don't deserve the win, the accomplishment. And I didn't used to be like this. Because I won awards when I was in school. And I accepted them. I dressed in the ugliest fucking dress my grandmother could find, and I walked up and got that most conscientious award. I accepted my diploma when I graduated high school, but even that my family has tried to make me feel guilty over because my little sister says that it's part of the reason our dad killed himself because I didn't invite him to the ceremony when I was only going to be able to invite one parent because one parent had to stay behind to take care of our brother and sister and my sister's kids who were young and living at that house at that time. And it was my mom's family that was going to the ceremony. So it felt right that it was my mom that I would invite. But, and, you know, I bet a lot of people when they graduate, they don't get to invite both parents because for some reason one parent has to stay behind and work or take care of kids or is overseas in the military or for whatever reason, only one parent goes. And that child doesn't have to face criticism and judgment from their siblings for the rest of their life for it. But I do. And it's simply so that they can take the accomplishment of graduating away from me and make it something that I should feel ashamed of. I published a book, I should be allowed to be proud of that, and I'm not. They're, they've been using it to terrorize me. The next book I'm trying to publish, I can't be proud of because they're going to use it to terrorize me. Anything I do now for the rest of my life, I know that I'm not allowed to take pride in. I'm not allowed to actually be successful to the point that it's just in my brain now that I'm not allowed to succeed. 
And even if I push past the thoughts, there's people in real life that are going to take action to stop me from ever having anything or being anything. And I don't even know if this is a trauma response or if it's literally because of the harassment that I'm still going through. Because if you look through the comments on the videos where I talk about writing a book, you'll see them mocking and bragging about the fact that they're going to take it as soon as it's published and they're going to distribute it for free, so it's not any kind of an achievement. They call my first book a pamphlet. It's not really a book. Nothing I do is real. Nothing I do matters. Nothing I do will ever be anything. So what's the point? Why keep... Why keep trying? I just don't know what to do right now. It's clear that no matter what I do, I'm never going to be able to have any sort of life with these people terrorizing me, even if I could mentally move past all of this. Even if I could mentally move past it, how do I move past the physical beings that are causing it? Because they're gonna keep on. Abusers don't just go away. Even if YouTube took action and deplatformed these cyberbullying channels that should not have ever had a platform on YouTube because they have been clearly cyberbullying people for years. And YouTube has been ignoring it for years. Even if YouTube took action against them, they would find other ways to terrorize me now because I'm I'm, I am the, their victim, and the abuser, once they find a victim, they don't just leave them alone. They don't just go away. There's literally nobody that can just make an abuser detach. That's why my little sister will just tell me to kill myself if I ever try to speak to her again. It doesn't, it's... There's never going to be any kind of forgiveness. There's never going to be any kind of love. There's only ever going to be abuse and judgment and hatred. And how do you live when that's all you have? When you don't have a single person in your corner. And they're going to be in the comments convincing me that it's my fault I don't have anybody in my corner. I came from abusers. It's all I know. Of course, I don't have anything in my corner but other abusers. I have never had the chance to get away and learn how to be a real person. And I'm never going to.